My name is Stefan. I'm here at Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complexes, Apollo Saturn V Center, and we're about to walk into the Treasures Gallery so we can learn a little bit more about how Apollo astronauts brought back moon rock and lunar samples to the Earth to be studied. Follow me. All 380 kilograms or 140 pounds on the moon of lunar sample rocks, regolith, was brought back in command modules just like this one, Apollo 14's Kitty Hawk. As you can see, there's not a lot of room in there to bring samples back. So they had to choose which samples they brought back very carefully. I'm going to show you some of those lunar samples they brought back. Follow me. This piece right here was brought back from the Apollo 17 mission by Harrison Jack Schmidt. Today, the only geologist or scientist to go to the moon. This is a piece of basalt. It is a volcanic rock. And the ones they brought back from Apollo 17 actually had trace amounts of titanium in them. Now, this one is encased in lucite. But we do have one that when you come to the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex, you can actually touch. On the very famous Apollo 11 mission, a few minutes after Neil stepped onto the surface, he had to get a contingency sample, some of the lunar surface, back to Earth just in case something went wrong. So he grabbed a sample, put it in his pocket. Um, but most samples we brought back to Earth had to be protected against the environment, against us. So most samples were put in vessels just like this one, sealed shut until we could get them back into a laboratory on Earth. Now when we're collecting samples from the moon, we don't want just surface rocks. We want to get a little bit deeper. In order to do that, we have coarse sample tubes. We have one right here. The astronauts would place it on the ground and they'd strike it with a hammer, about 50 hammer blows. That way they could go deep into the surface. We can actually get the timeline of the moon the deeper you go. We want to get a wide collection of samples from the lunar surface. The first couple missions to the moon, Apollo 11, 12, and 14, they couldn't venture out too far away from their lunar module just in, ca in case something went wrong and they had to come back. The last three missions to the moon, Apollo 15, 16, and 17, they brought with them something that allowed them to travel great distances and explore many other sites, a lunar rover. This allowed them to go to different craters, different events that have happened on the moon to give us a bigger story of what and how the moon came to be. One of the samples you can actually touch here is a piece of mare basalt, similar to one of the rocks we have inside the treasures gallery. Now this piece was brought back from Apollo 17 mission, the Taurus Littrow Valley, brought back by astronaut Harrison Jack Schmidt. Now this one is a small piece and it's a slice cut out of a rock and a lot of people are wondering why is this piece so small? Well, you got to remember we did not bring a lot of moon rock back in total 840 pounds so we don't have a lot but this does represent a large portion of what we do have before we end today's video we have an experiment for you to do at home remember that lunar rover that allowed the astronauts to travel great distances and pick up a wide array of rocks well they needed help picking up those rocks and we had lots of geologists on the surface of earth helping those astronauts do that but in order to help them they needed a seat so we have this camera here and it was controlled by Houston so they could point out the rocks that they would like that they thought were a little bit better for the astronauts to pick up but they're sensitive electronics and we don't want it don't want it to heat up so it's covered in this gold foil and we chose gold because gold reflects infrared radiation best that's the kind of radiation that warms you up don't worry it's not dangerous it's not ionizing it's, it's safe it's, it's the same kind that actually comes out of your TV remote now most phones not all phones but a lot of them um, can actually see this radiation so here's the experiment just find a TV remote take your cell phone camera hit one of the buttons on the TV remote you can actually see the infrared radiation coming out of your TV remote you can't normally see it because your eyes are only good for visible radiation but most cell phone cameras can see infrared radiation coming out of the TV remote. Let us know if your experiment was successful in picking up that infrared radiation. 
My name is Stefan from the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. Thank you for joining us.